Okay, today we're going to have a look at the uh, Intelligent Systems IS Nitro emulator. It's a development tool for the Nintendo DS. As you can see on the top, we've got a Game Boy Advance slot and a DS card slot, some status LEDs on the front, and a hardwired DS into the main body of the unit. On switching it on, it boots up just like a standard DS, nothing unusual. Uh, my system is uh, just a test system, it's got no video out or card support, so uh, just show you what I mean by that. Uh, you know, the DS operates completely as normal. Um, the actual DS itself is just a shell and a screen and some buttons, it's not an active DS. The guts of the system, the actual GBA unit and the DS unit emulation, or hardware emulation is done inside the OS Nitro and um, there's nothing actually in the DS itself just some inputs and outputs. This is the rear of the unit, well, we've got a power switch on the top left, we've got a DC input which is actually a GameCube uh, power supply, two AV outputs, some dim switches, a USB connection for the host PC and wireless which is actually Ethernet on this unit. Um, dip switch is there, the only one really of interest is dip switch 4 which is a uh, firmware reset, uh, which resets it back to, back to uh, factory defaults. There were absolutely loads of these different units early, you know, mine's a quite a late DS unit, um, you know, as you can see from the pictures there's absolutely loads of things that were created for this particular system. Uh, this is just a few. This is the inside of the DS unit, the Nitro unit, um, as you can see jump pack there full of uh, all original equipment this is a test cartridge um, you could write to this test cartridge and then put it into that uh, IS Nitro emulator and play it give it a bit of a demo here just to show you what it's like this is the this is the unit out of its box it's not um, you know it's had no firmware modifications this is exactly as it was purchased as you can see when you put the DS cart in um, there is no uh, change in state the machine doesn't recognize it that's because the firmware this machine was um, came out the factory with didn't support anything it didn't support video out it didn't support any of the cartridge slots it was purely just for injecting code in from a host PC and you tested it on your actual unit you know the DS handheld unit itself um, the DS card is a bit different nobody has really hacked the uh, DS card side of it just the uh, um, GBA side and the video output so this little bit of a tutorial just goes through what I did to uh, set it up um, you install the IS Nitro software you find this folder which has got the IS Nitro DLL in it um, you extract that and uh, patch it which then obviously changes the machine's characteristics um, you can you know I wouldn't delete the original code the original uh, DLL um, just replace it with uh, your patched one from the instructions on that website and um, what it does is basically enable, enables the uh, video output uh, and enables the, um, gar uh, the Game Boy Advance uh, card slot. Uh, just makes the system a little bit more usable. So what I'm actually doing here um, is actually installing the um, IS Nitro software, which that then installs the drivers. Um, I've already patched the um, IS Nitro DDL DLL on this. Um, so what's going to happen as soon as I've uh, installed the drivers, the um, and turn on the IS Nitro, the PC, it's an XP uh, PC, PC is going to recognise the uh, IS Nitro and it's going to um, ask for a, a firmware update on the unit. When it does that firmware update, it's going to load in that new uh, modified um, patched unit, which is then going to enable mine to uh, opens up my system a little bit. It's you know it's it's a bit rigid when you can't actually see anything on the on the TV screen or or play any GBA stuff. It just opens the system up a little bit. So obviously that's the code that's been injected. We've rebooted it, and you, as you can see now, I've got a GBA icon. And it worked so that's basically you know the easy way it's very easy it, it literally took about 15 minutes to load that bit of code in which I thought was quite impressive it's uh, some great work done by the community on this one um, unfortunately they are, I don't think they've cracked the DS card slot yet so you can't um, you can't play retail games in the DS card slot obviously it was it can only use the development card uh, um, for loading games in from that perspective um, or you know you can actually you can inject um, games into it uh, through the PC which we'll see a little bit later but this is obviously just a bit of a demo showing that the GBA now works perfectly which is a bit of a cool uh, cool thing and makes this machine a whole lot more usable a bit of Wolfenstein here just to have a quick play out 
right now um, I'm gonna be as you can see in the in the right hand side of this video you can see that I've got I'm actually capturing this so that shows that I'm actually output the uh, the IS Nitro is actually outputting uh, video now which is cool um, so what I'm doing is, is sending code from this uh, PC using the IS Nitro debugger software and I'm sending encrypted ROMs to the actual IS Nitro now an interesting fact most of the ROMs that you download off sites and stuff like that come decrypted to allow them to work on you know, these cards that, you know, like the DS1i card that I used to have back in the day um, this machine obviously can't do that so you need to run a piece of software which is readily available you know Google it's not it's not um, hard to find you, there's a bit of software that you'd use to re-encrypt the ROMs then you can the uh, you, you rename them so that the uh, you rename them NDS uh, so and then basically search for them and, in, and use the IS Nitro to inject it into the uh, into its system and then obviously you can play it just like I'm playing now so it's um you know we're going to go through a little bit of a collection of games but um, these are the ones just the ROMs that I just grabbed and decrypted nothing particularly special or particularly any particular reason but just goes to show that now the system's been cracked and the firmware's been cracked I can pretty much play any DS game on um, you know on the screen on a, on, a, on a large screen which is quite a cool thing you know you're not restricted to that little screen anymore uh, a bit of metal slug why not you know metal slugs one of my all-time favorites I do own all of the um, Neo Geos and um, even the Neo Geo X and all you know the port little portable thing they made um, might be doing a video on that later on but um, you know Obviously, classic, really, really cool game. So I can't uh, can't get enough of Metal Slug. There's just uh, it can't be enough on enough systems, if you ask me. But well, I'll cover that on another video maybe later on. I am getting tempted by. There seems to be a lot of interest around the Neo Geo. Probably considering um, there's a flash card being um, released, which is like you know the Holy Grail and hen's teeth to get. <laughs> but it is uh, it does look a cool bit of kit, the SD loader. But that's for another day. Um, Bomberman, you know, cracking Bomberman. Um, you know, who doesn't like Bomberman? I think my favourite version is Saturn Bomberman, I don't know why. Um, but um, just wanted to show this one up and running, just to show that you know there aren't many ROMs that don't work on this. Um, it is a cool little feature. It, it, it makes the machine more accessible from a home use perspective. Um, so, uh, yep, yeah, that's the IS Nitro and me loading in the patch to actually get it to work. These are the websites that I use to... Um, get the system patched and up and running and did a bit of research on and got it all working so really pleased I've got it so uh, thanks for watching this video and uh, we'll see you again next time bye for now